And so that's going to that's going to do it. I uh, want to thank Coach Blake Anderson for visiting with us a few minutes here uh, early Friday morning. And speaking of early on a Friday morning, let's bring in Mike Bernard from OTM Sports. Mike, how are you? It's uh, 8 o'clock on the East Coast. And if my brain is still working, uh, we're going to back that up. And it's going to be 5 o'clock out there for our early risers on the West Coast. It is, but I work off East Coast time, so it's all good. Good to see you, Coach. Good to see you, Mike. This uh, segment brought to you by Main Channel Brewing Company in Albertville and Gunnersville, Alabama. Bobby and Vicki Satterfield, along with Clay Smith, they uh, engage in the local community. They provide a unique experience in their tap rooms. They're high quality and affordable beer for the growing craft beer community. And if you can't make it to Albertville or Gunnersville, just order online mainchannelbrewing.com that's mainchannelbrewing.com quality beer for quality living and you can catch that uh, website down in the ticker throughout uh, this segment here mike um, the top six teams in the country this week they get a breather i mean you've got georgia going to vandy indiana or uh, indiana visiting number two michigan ohio state plays at purdue number four florida state hosts syracuse Oklahoma is off this week, and Penn State might as well be off. I mean, they're they're hosting UMass. Right. Georgia's favored by 31, Michigan by 33, Ohio State anywhere between 19 and 20, Florida State 17 and a half, and Penn State's favored by 42. All should win, of course. Look, Penn State's lines are so high because James Franklin is purposely trying to cover games and – Look, when he did the fake kneel down to cover the four touchdown spread against <laughs> Northwestern, that's just shameful. Oh, uh, I, I agree. I, I'm telling you, James Franklin, he he is one of these guys who, uh, and, I, and he's a great football coach, don't get me wrong, but he's very sanctimonious about things when they're working against him, but very he can rationalize things when, it, when he deems that it helps them. So, yeah. Uh, so, you know, like I said, James, and, and like a lot of coaches, you know, if, if it's happening to me, it's bad. If it's happening for me, it's good. And listen, nothing going on big in the SEC this week either. I mean, you've got Bama taking on a weak Arkansas team. LSU and Auburn, usually this is a big game nationally, but, I mean, it really doesn't mean that much this year. Uh, how bad is it uh, this week in the SEC, the feature? SEC game at 2.30 on CBS. You know, it's usually a top 10 matchup going against each other. But the best they can do this week's number 19, Tennessee, is they welcome in a unranked and limping Texas A&M squad. Yeah, and when you look at Missouri and Kentucky, they're two 5-1 and one teams. That should be a good game. It's a low point spread and two solid teams. But that game lost its appeal when both teams lost last Saturday. Uh, even next year's SEC teams, Oklahoma and Texas, are off this week. Yeah. Now, we do have across the country four ranked versus ranked games this week, and I think they all have the potential to be very entertaining games and, and implications down the road for the playoffs. Let's start off with number eight, Oregon, at number seven, Washington. That's the 330 Eastern, 230 Central ABC game. Both of these undefeated and both offenses averaging over 550 yards per game. I think this game has two of the most underappreciated quarterbacks in the nation, the Ducks, Bo Nix, and the Huskies, Michael Penix, by way of, of Indiana. Washington is a slight favorite in this game. Is it? You look at these two teams, though, is, the, is Washington favored because of the home field advantage? Yeah, that's it, and it's a good home field advantage. And you say these quarterbacks are underappreciated. They were before the season started, but right now, Penix is the number one favorite to win the Heisman, and Bo Nix is number three behind Caleb Williams. So the first three betting favorites to win the Heisman are all from the Pac-12, two of which are in this game. Uh, I think Washington would have a better advantage, a better home field advantage, if this game were at night. It's going to be played at you know, 1230 on the West Coast. So that helps Oregon a little bit. Um, you know, the road team has won this series five of the last seven times, which is a bit surprising. I do not have a position in this game. It should be high scoring, but 67 for the over-under is too steep for me. 
And Mike, you was talking about uh, uh, Penix and Bo Nix uh, jumping up in the Heisman race. You know, for years and years, the uh, the Pac-12 really didn't get a lot of respect, and maybe deservingly so. It's splitting up. It's, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds uh, for Washington State and Oregon State, and as the only, I guess, original members of the Pac-12 that's going to be left. But uh, it seems like they're going out with a bang across the board. Uh, Pac-12 is playing pretty good football this year. They really are, and it's ironic because, as you said, they haven't been involved in the playoff. When they do get in, they get beat by double digits, and they haven't been in in so long. And now their best year, and seemingly since the playoff era at least, is their final year. Okay, speaking of the Pac-12, number 10 USC and Caleb Williams, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, they go in to take on number 21 Notre Dame. That is the 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central NBC game. And uh, the Trojans, 6-0, and but they needed three overtimes last week to get by Arizona. The Irish, 5-2, and two, they were outclassed in Louisville. Maybe that says more about the job Jeff Brom has done in Louisville in that short amount of time than how bad Notre Dame uh, is. And uh, surprisingly to me, like Washington, Notre Dame is a slight favorite at home with two losses against the undefeated Trojans. Yeah, and... Notre Dame, they played seven straight weeks, a tough, grueling schedule. Marcus Freeman says his team's not tired. I don't believe it. Uh, when a team plays a stretch like that, they're mentally, physically, and emotionally drained. I don't trust USC's defense, and they haven't won in South Bend in 12 years. But other indicators uh, have me leaning to USC getting a field goal here. Number 25, Miami at number 12, North Carolina. This is opposite the USC Notre Dame game uh, on ABC. And Mike, just to let you know now, we're up against a hard break in a few minutes, so you can't go off on too big of a rant here when I say this name. But, you know, Mario Cristobal, he takes a knee last week versus Georgia Tech. This is a top 15 matchup between two undefeated teams. You know, what he did was inexplicable and really unforgivable because he did the same thing. Thing five seasons ago in Oregon. He ran the football when he could have taken a knee and he lost the game in overtime to Stanford. You know, how do you make $8 million a year and you don't know when to take a knee? We've talked about this ad nauseum on other shows and other segments uh, really since, since the last five years. But again, we thought that Nick Saban was going to win the the bonehead uh, play call of the year or the week last week when he threw the ball on first down. But Mario's, he gave the famous knock, hold my beer here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the guy is not fit to coach at this level. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Not only, you mentioned the Stanford game. Remember, it, it didn't cost him, but he threw the pass in the Rose Bowl against Oregon. And if he, that ball is incomplete, they probably lose that game. So he has no idea. I mean, it is that obtuse behavior may have lost him the locker room. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing the Tar Heels open minus four. They're now down to three. Of course, Drake May is a star, and UNC is easily the better coach team. But it, the odds makers and the betters, they're playing Miami to rebound. It looks like a trap to take Carolina here, but. I, I can never trust Cristobal. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, as you mentioned this, uh, things like that cost you the locker room. When you, when you have a player on the sideline caught saying, what the blank are we doing? I mean, again, right there, that, that tells you. And that one player, I guarantee you, uh, he, was, he was expressing the sentiments not only of himself, but a lot of players in that locker room. And it's going to be tough for them emotionally to get back. Uh, I kind of like the Tar Heels here. All right, our last game, number 18, UCLA at number 15, Oregon State. This is the Fox primetime matchup. Bruins come in at 4-1, the Beavers 5-1. They have three common opponents. They both beat San Diego State. Uh, Oregon State lost to Washington State and beat Utah, but then UCLA – beat Washington State, but lost to Utah. So, again, you know, you can't really decipher a whole lot from the common opponents. And uh, But once again, the home team favored by about a field goal. 
Right. Uh, Beavers open five. They're now down to three and a half. UCLA's defense, they have the respect of betters, professional betters, odds makers. Last week, they gave up 10 offensive points. They gave up 17. One was a pick six. But they gave up 10 offensive points to a Washington State team that was averaging 45 a game. Oregon State's defense, they've held opponents to single digits in three of their six games. I like both defenses here to keep it under uh, 54. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Again, I want to thank Main Channel Brewing for sponsoring this segment with Mike Bernard of OTM Sports, who joins us several times a week here on Game Day Sports Radio. Uh, and again, if you can't get down to Albertville or Gunnersville, Alabama, uh, mainchannelbrewing.com right there in the ticker. Mike, we look forward to visiting with you again on Monday. We'll recap some of these games and, and also some of the NFL picks that we've made uh, uh, earlier this week. And is there any other games from a college standpoint that uh, we haven't talked about that sticks out to you? Uh I like that. I like Kentucky to rebound and beat Missouri at home. Missouri's uh, loss was tough at home. Kentucky, you know, they they had it handed to them, and they're. I like their coaching staff. I think Kentucky's a game to uh, to look at on Saturday. Uh, I'm, uh, Mike, I would tell you have a relaxing weekend, but I know weekends are never relaxing for you. But we'll get together again on Monday. Absolutely enjoyed it, Coach. Enjoy it here. All right, we'll be back in just a minute with uh, Dave Smith talking a little Big Ten action uh, here on GameDaySportsRadio.com. 